the concept of holiness in um, is probably very relevant to us today in terms of fact I think it's been a little misunderstood from the general soldiery yes. or from Christians as a whole yes. to some it is very deep and meaningful and mm. yet for me when John says I, we should have life and life abundantly mm. I feel that holiness is a life of joy yes but I think this people have a, a different concept of it well, I'm sure you're right because the doctrine that we adhere to uh, in the Salvation Army says that it's the privilege, even that implies joy. It does. Yeah. It's the privilege of all believers to be wholly sanctified and that their whole spirit and soul and body may be preserved blameless until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now that's a statement almost verbatim from 1 Thessalonians yeah. 5.23. Now here Paul says that it's God's will that we should be sanctified holy and there he uses a Greek word holotolois and then further along he uses another similar word holocleron now they are both whole words the first is the word we translate holy yeah. and the second is the word we translate whole notice they, are, they both begin with the prefix holos from which we get our word holistic mm -hmm. what Paul is saying is that God's work in our life is holistic. Right. That's what we're on about. That God does not work with us piecemeal. So we don't say, yes, you can, you can have this bit of my life, but not this bit. All there is of me, Lord, is the way we respond to God's call in our life. And so he's saying, I'm praying that you will be sanctified in every part of your life and that you shall be kept wholly kept in every component of your personality. That's the gist of those two strange words. And then, interestingly, he links this with being preserved. And there he uses a good word because it will come from the word used of the Roman soldiers guarding their prisoners. Now, there are some Christians who talk about eternal security. We may say more about this later on. Yes. Once saved, always saved. We, we see our security in Christ as tied to God's sanctifying work. As God is working in our lives in the holistic sense, in every part of our personality, so we experience his keeping power, his saving grace, right until the end. Mm. So contrary to the view of some, we're not hanging on by our fingernails, uh, but at the same time we're not sloppy and indifferent to the claims of God in our life. So the call to be godly and the promise of security go hand in hand. Separate the two and you end up with a problem. If you only have security it means well I can live as I like and it doesn't really matter because I'll still go to heaven anyway. Mm. On the other hand if we say well yes we can be sanctified but there's no real assurance we're going to be saved tomorrow morning, then we're not going to have the joy. Mm. But you combine the two, as Paul has done, mm. and then you have a joyful understanding of what it is to experience this sanctifying grace of which he speaks. Mm. Well, that certainly makes it a lot clearer. I look forward to our next conversation when uh, we will obviously go a little deeper into some of the aspects of our faith. Very good. Thanks very much, Alan. <laughs>